When Samudra Gupta had ascended the Gupta throne, his first priority was to have a complete control over the Ganga Valley. In the first two great campaigns of Samudra Gupta, we find that he had achieved this goal. Now, after having gained control over the whole Ganga Valley, he had two options. First, he could consolidate his empire of northern India or he could venture deep into the south. Samudra Gupta chose the latter option. And in this video, we are going to talk about this campaign of Samudra Gupta, which led him to the deep south. Before we talk about this campaign and how it proceeded, I think it is important to first mention the motivation behind this campaign. When we look at the history of Southern India, we find that from the modern period onwards, Southern India has become an important player in the maritime trade. When we read Arthashastra, we find that there are several items that are mentioned that were exported from Southern India to different regions of India and particularly Northern India. In Arthashastra, we are told that the Pandya country was famous for its conch shells, pearls, etc. The pearls of the Pandyas were quite famous and even Megasthenes mentioned this. Now, after the fall of the Mauryas, we find that in the post-modern period, the region of southern India, particularly deep south, had become an important center of maritime trade, particularly the trade with the western world. During this period, the Greek and the Roman ships used to sail down to this part of the country. And what these traders wanted was the ivory, spices, corn cells, pearls, etc. that were found in this region. And they traded these items with gold and silver. And that is why what we see is that by the end of the modern period, this region and particularly the coastal regions of southern India had become quite rich. Now, what is interesting is that these regions not only traded with the Western world, they also traded with other regions of the Indian subcontinent. And what we see is that when Samudra Gupta had become the Gupta ruler, it is quite possible that the fame and the prosperity of the wealth of the southern countries had become famous throughout the Indian subcontinent. And it was this wealth that Samudra Gupta desired. And this was, according to me, the primary reason why Samudra Gupta campaigned deep into the south. Although the Allahabad Prashasti tells us that Samudra Gupta defeated all the kings of Dakshinapath, only 12 kings are mentioned. And according to most scholars, these 12 kings were the kings that Samudra Gupta defeated. Now, the location of the territories that were ruled by these kings are difficult to identify. But some historians have tried to do so. By identifying the territories that these 12 kings of Dakshinapath ruled, we can also map out the route which Samudra Gupta took in this conquest of Dakshinapath. Now, this is my guess because most of the territories that are mentioned in the Prashasti is a matter of debate. But if suppose we believe that Samudra Gupta started his campaign from his base that was was the city of Allahabad or during this period it was called Kosam, we see that from Kosam, Samudra Gupta moved south up to the northern shore of the Narmada river. After reaching the northern banks of the river Narmada, we find that Samudra Gupta turned east and here he encountered his first opposition. Now, after defeating this king, we find that Samudra Gupta moved southeast towards the modern region of Bilaspur. From Bilaspur, we see that Samudra Gupta traveled alongside the Mahanadi river and passing through the Mahanadi valley, he reached the Odisan coast. And after reaching the coast of Odisha, we see that Samudra Gupta moved along the coastline. And finally, he reached the city of Kanchi. Now, there are some scholars who believe that Samudra Gupta did not travel as far as Kanchi. But in my view, Samudra Gupta did travel as far as the city of Kanchi. In Allahabad Prashasti, we are told that during this period, the city of Kachi was ruled by a king named Vishnu Gop, and Samudra Gupta defeated this king. Some scholars have argued that in this whole campaign of southern India, Samudra Gupta sometime also used his naval power. 
Now, I think it is quite possible that when Samudragupta was traveling in the coastal regions, he did use naval vessels for transport. But I'm not sure whether Samudragupta also used naval vessels for attack. So this is what I believe. And what we see is that we have also little evidence to prove that he used naval vessels. We In the Ilhabad Prashasti, we only get 12 names of the kings of Dakshinapath that were defeated by Samutragupta. Another interesting point about these 12 kings of Dakshinapath is that Samudragupta used entirely different policy towards these kings. In the Allahabad Prashasti, the term which is used is Grahana Mukshanugra, meaning Samudragupta first defeated these kings, then he liberated them, and finally he reinstated them on their thrones. This would mean that Samudragupta wanted them to become his tributaries. Samudragupta's policy of not establishing complete control over the Dakshinabath made sense because this region was quite far away from the Gupta base. And to control this region, it required much more material resources and also military resources. And Samudragupta knew that it would be quite impossible for him to control these regions for a long period of time. So it was better to make these kings tributary and in future he could also get some help from these kings. Now the first two campaigns of Sambudgupta has been discussed in these videos. You can watch them. Thank you for watching.